because I want to start off this moment um, with two things. First, I want to let y'all look at me. And you're looking at the host of the Lady in the Kid Right show. I'm going to have my own radio show starting every Thursday in April at 8 o'clock p.m. Oh, yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a happy Thursday over here at WLVS. Welcome to the Lady Nakia Wright Show. Happy Thursday. I am so excited to be with you. Yes. Thank you again for joining us each and every week. The 8 o'clock hour on Thursdays have become my favorite hour of the day. I am extremely excited about it. If you're joining us via WLVS online, thank you so very much for joining us each and every week. If you're joining us via social media, thank you. Please share this with your listening audience. Today's show is going to be fire. I'm excited about it because it's something that I'm passionate about. Every first Thursday of the month is a Our Marriage Matters section segment. And when I tell you today we've come with the fire, I promise you so very much we've come with the fire. Y'all not ready for this. Um, I want to just start out again with a huge thank you. Um, Listen Vision Live, you've been extremely faithful each and every week. I am grateful to have been introduced to you, and I am enjoying the journey that we're on. Our social media audience, you have been extremely faithful. Not only do you join us each and every week, you invite others to join us as well. And I am, I cannot get, there are not enough words in the human vocabulary to tell you how very thankful I am for you, to you. And my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I give him all honor, all glory, and all the praise. If it wouldn't, if it had not been for him seeing the value and worth in me, I don't know where I would be. So I'm extremely grateful to my Lord and Savior, and I'm honored. I am forever filled with praise that he's given me such a gift in the, in the human form of my husband, Donald Wright. Without his yes, this platform would not even be here. So I am extremely grateful for the value that he's seen in me and thought that I can add worth to somebody else's life. So baby, thank you so very much. I know that you're looking. I'm excited about it. Next week, you're going to be right here, though. Don't get too comfortable on that couch. This is a better look for you on Thursdays at 8 o'clock. <laughs> And behind the scenes, we have, um, I'm just filled with gratitude today. So just give me one more, um, 60 more seconds, just to shout out a huge thank you for the ladies that are behind the scenes. And that's Laura and Charmy. They are here. You don't see them every week, but they have committed their lives to my yes. I'm grateful for them. I don't know where I would be without them. So I, I love to give them their flowers while they are alive. Um, they could have chosen to be anywhere else, but the fact that they are here always making me look good and sound great. I am truly honored to have them in my corner. And I'm grateful that God saw that we walked the earth at the exact exact time, same time. So together we have chosen to make an impact and I am grateful for them. I'll say to any of you that are listening, the people in your lives, don't take for granted that they know what you mean to them or they mean to you. Make sure that you tell them daily, thank you. Um, because thank yous go a long way. And again, give them their flowers while they are alive. It does nothing for you to cry really hard for me when I can't see your tears. I want to hear your kind words and see your good deeds while we are alive, while I can enjoy and appreciate them. You know, there used to be a saying where it was that you're here today and gone tomorrow. No, you're here today and gone today. So make sure that you let the people in your lives, in your life know how much they mean to you, how 
how much value they bring to your life. And for any reason, if you've had a falling out with someone that you love so very much over something so minute, if I, I'm sorry or I forgive you or it wasn't that serious, it's all it takes to mend that relationship. Go the extra mile and mend the relationship. Don't miss valuable moments in life because of a I'm sorry or I forgive you or a misunderstanding. Life is too short and there's too many valuable moments that a union can make together if, if we just come together and, and have peace and walk in unity. So those are my little short segments today, my words of wisdom to give, to just value those who are around you. And um, we're going to take a quick 60 second break. And when I return, my co-host for today, Mika Woods, and the Reimagine Life segment, the very first one on the Lady Nakia Wright show, our very first segment is the one and only Terry Long, who's a part of Spotlight on, o, Over the City, who has a show right before ours. Their show is hilarious. You have to catch it. It is at seven o'clock. Put your mark, just block your calendars off from seven to nine. Spotlight over the city first, and then the Lady Nakia Wright show. Let me tell you something your Thursdays are going to be full of fire. I'm excited about these two ladies. Share this with your listening audience. Text your friends. Tell them our Marriage Matters segment is on, and we're about to bring it. So, 60 seconds, restroom break, potty your nose, get your snack, and let's come right back. Yes. I want to start off this moment um, with two things. First, I want to let y'all look at me. And you're looking at the host of the Lady McKee Wright show. I'm going to have my own radio show starting every Thursday in April at 8 o'clock p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Don't the panel look good? Yes. Oh, we look good sitting up here, ladies. Yes. I'm excited about it. Mm. Welcome back to the Lady Nakia Wright Show, A Life Reimagined. Every first Thursday, we do a segment called My Marriage Matters. The one and only, the infamous Mika Woods has joined me. Um, this will be her second Thursday joining me. Yes. And I am grateful for her, yes. Um, this week we did something different. I love engagement. So this week we sent out some questions on our social media audience. And thank you all for responding. We're going to address those questions very shortly. We're going to talk about your responses. They were good. <laughs> And listen, I, I feel like we got like the best following on social media because they were all positive. I was like, yes, we got some dynamic people following us. But before we get started on our Marriage Matters segment, I wanted to do a segment called A Life Reimagined. And that is that, like myself, um, there are people on the earth that is living a life that they never thought that they would. And there's a lot of gratitude to come from a life that you don't think that you deserve. And today, right before me, I have one of my very good friends, mm. Terry um, Long, with hey. me. Yes. Hi, y'all. And as I said before, she is the host, um, the co-host of Spotlight Over the City with her dynamic husband, Stan Long. And yes. they're making some major moves here in the DMV area. They are every Every event they are everywhere doing the thing that her husband spoke over their union and said yes, that they he would did. do yes he so did. there is something to be connected to powerful covenant yes tonight i asked her to join us because many of us are living in our life after and as I mentioned before, um, Terry is very happily married to her husband, Stan Long. Yes, and I'm God. grateful that this is the, this ringer right mm -hmm. here. You What's hit this for? when we say something really good. Okay. So I'm gonna say that rewind. I thought that was for if I had messed up. No, 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 no. This is no, no, no. I'm like, the kid got the bail for me. <laughs> Blinking you out. No, this is when I say something really good. So I'm going to okay. rewind. All right. So Terry is very happily married to her husband, Stan Long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I asked 
asked her here because she's living a life reimagined. Um, she's living life after divorce. And for those of you that are following us on our social media audience, I wanted to discuss, I wanted to hear from someone who had the courage to love again after life disappointed them. Mm. So Terry, what would you offer a heart that has experienced divorce and is looking for the courage to love again? Listen, um, I will not start by saying that that's an easy thing to do because it's definitely not an easy thing to do. But I am a true fan of love. I believe Come in on. love to the end. You hear me? Yes. And so, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, things happen in life where, you know, that you, you, you make some wrong decisions. And I am not above that. I made some, you know, bad decisions in my life as well. And um, there's life after that, though, you know, and that's I'm living proof of it. I used to be embarrassed about it. Um, I'm no longer embarrassed about it. The more I have grown as a woman um, and I have this amazing husband who has helped me grow spiritually, I, um, I'm now am able to, you know, share with others the, the joy of life after something painful like a divorce. Because again, when you believe in love like me, like I've been in love since fourth grade. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Like, I just wanted to be in love. You know what I mean? Yes. And so um, I just never wanted to give up on that. And so I would encourage those who, who have gone through a, such something as painful as a divorce to never give up on love. But what I did have to do was take a step back for myself and say, God, work this out. If you want me in another marriage, then guide me that way. Send him to me and let me let you do that for me. I didn't want to pick it anymore because I didn't do a great job. And that's so that's good. the one thing I said to myself with this time around with this great man is that I wasn't going to pick the person. I wasn't going to find someone who was cute or who was this or that. I was just going to wait until God sent that person to me. That's very good. Yeah. My husband says something that's so key. He says life is a thing that happens in between our plans. Mm. And oftentimes um, our plans. Yes, Bishop. <laughs> yes. Oftentimes our plans look nothing like the plans that God has designed for they our life. Not. And quite often many of us. Um, we have aborted God's plan and went after the emotional highs of our own plans. Yes. And I am grateful that e even in the midst of taking a detour in life, you found a way to come right back to the throne of God, give him full control over your entire life, and then allow him to bless you. Because covenants, and this is what we'll talk about, um, as I see you and Stan walk out your lives each day, uh, marriages require game plans yes. and oftentimes we go into a marriage with emotional high and we don't map out a game plan of what our union is supposed to bring about right. there's something that some things that you do when you are single but there's other things that when you're connected to greatness that something is to be birthed from it yes and yes. i see the manifestations of the things that you mm. and team long have birthed mm -hmm. and i'm excited about it yes ma'am i am excited about it as well like you know i, I i'm just filled with gratitude actually you know I, I'm even on the days where he's not like you know like I'm like Ugh. even I have those days I do life is not perfect life is not perfect life is not perfect but let me tell you something even in those days I'm grateful I am so grateful just because I have someone who was sent by God and who is just he is just amazing y'all I mean yes. he, is just, he is amazing I and love so, it you know and and so when you when you hold out for something that you fit, that you know that was ordained by God I'm telling you, it is an amazing thing. It is beautiful. Amen. Yeah. So I had to stop picking for myself. Listen. That's, that's the matter. You know, that's where we me, mess up. That's where we mess up. <laughs> I had to stop doing things and, and trying to guide it myself because that's not the right way to do it. And now that I've done it the right way, I got the right one. And um, again, like Nakia said, it's not perfect, but it is um, it is way more perfect than it is not. I yes. will say that. Yes, look. Yes. But it's for you. It's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect yes. for you. It's perfect for me. Yeah, that's what I say. Yeah. It's not my marriage isn't perfect, but it's perfect, perfect for, for you. Me. Mm -hmm. Because I know I'm a lot. <laughs> I know I'm a lot. And there's not a lot of people out there that are willing to take on the project that's known as Mika. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I found my person. And that's what I say when people ask me, um, 
you know, about my marriage and how long we've been married and how do you guys do it? I'm like, he's just my person. He's your person. And some things you can't explain. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense to us. Right. It might not make sense to you when and you're on the outside. it's not supposed to make trying sense to, figure to it out, anybody but, but you. To us. Yes. And, that, and, you know, as we've discussed before, that's just how we live our life and operate our marriage. Mm -hmm. There's just two people in it. That's so it. it only matters for two people, but he's my person. I love person. that. So it seems I love that, that you Mika. found your person. Yes. Uh, I have found my person. person. Yeah. Found Everybody my person. has a person. Everybody. You just got to weed through yes. the trenches, you know, to to make that, that magic happen. Yes. So. I found my person. Recovery <laughs> is possible. Recovery is necessary because the Bible says that man is not supposed to be alone. And if you allow one heartbreak to make you think otherwise, you may be missing out on yes. the greatness that life has for you. I, so I am honored. Yes. Mm. I am honored to sit next to you. You know that you and I have known each other for a very long time. Yes. And my husband and I were actually privileged enough to speak with you and Stan prior to marriage. Yes, they did. And to see what marriage has blossomed into for Team Long has been something to celebrate. So it gives me great honor to present to you for the very first time, the very first she award going She always got tricks up her sleeve. <laughs> we're presenting the Life Reimagined Award to you on the Lady Nakia Wright Show. You're living a refived, a re re redefined, and a reimagined life. And it's truly one to be celebrated. Thank you so, 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 so much. <laughs> <laughs> She I believe in new beginnings, and uh, you all have, have truly created a new beginning for both of your lives. So yes, we yes, salute yes. you. Thank you I so thank much. You for I love us. you so much. I appreciate you having me. Um, love all of you all who love. <laughs> if you love Lady Nakia Wright, then I love you too. <laughs> if you do not love Lady Nakia Wright, mm, <laughs> <laughs> I am going to get you. <laughs> How can you not love her? Yeah. So um, thank you so much. No, you're welcome. And thank you, Mika. Yes. I found my person. I found your person. <laughs> yes. And thank you for having the courage to tell your story. Like uh, most, many people live in the shame of their disappointments, mm -hmm. and they don't realize that they are answers for somebody else's success. Mm -hmm. And you openly share your story now that the shame is gone, yep. and you've learned how to get the power out of the pain, and you live in the greatest days that you've ever that you could have ever imagined. That I could have ever imagined. I just want him to. Get Give me a baby, and then that's going to top it all. <laughs> With that being said, we're going to take a brief break, and um, after that, our Marriage Matters segment will go forward. Yes. Come right back. Thank you. <laughs> you want me every Thursday. I'll be every Thursday, but I'll be pulling on y'all for your wisdom and your strength to join me at the table of two. Come on now. I want to start off this moment um, with two things. First, I want to let y'all look at me. Yes. If you're just joining us, thank you so very much and welcome to the Lady Nakia Wright Show. If you're joining us via Listen Vision Live, thank you so very much. If you're joining us via social, our social media audience, thank you so very much. I do want to give a special shout out to my, my Deb. My Deb, if you're looking, please know that we are praying for you, that we miss you and we love you so very much. Um, we, if you just, if you missed it, you just missed our, for our very first time, a segment called A Life Reimagined, where Terry Long shared with us just a, a tidbit of life after divorce, how she never gave up on love. And as a result of that, God blessed her with the man of her dreams. And she's living out some of the greatest days of her life. I'm honored that she shared her story. And I do advise you, if you didn't see it, um, if you go to www.awomansvoicematters.net on tomorrow, you'll see the whole show. And I believe that there's some words that happened in this moment that will bless your life. Now, without further ado, my co-host and I are ready. <laughs> oh, we lit it up for the past 24 hours on social media asking vital questions as it pertains to covenant. Mm -hmm. One thing that many people, I, I, I mentioned it very briefly before, many people go into covenant without goals, without expectations without a game plan and once you get into covenant and the emotional high of it is gone you're looking like 
is this what marriage yeah. is supposed to be about? And you don't attach purpose to the assignment of covenant. And that is so very necessary. And oftentimes, purpose cannot even be attached because we lack the, ve the very, the little fundamentals that it takes to mm -hmm. make marriage a success. We forget that when you are married, the Bible says a man that finds a wife and many people forget what a wife is. We read Proverbs 31 and say, who can find a virtuous woman? But we don't apply the practicality to the word virtuous. What does that mean? Are we a woman that gets up early in the morning and prepare her house so that our house is set in order? Are we women that will go out and create products to sell to bring money and value into our home? Do the people in the community look up to us and respect us? Because that's some of the characteristics of a virtuous woman. We have to study that scripture a lot harder. There's a lot to it that we miss. And game plans are, me are necessary in covenant. Right? I agree. Yes. Ex except for I can't get up in the morning because I'm not a morning person. But I have all the other <laughs> bases covered. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you know, everybody is not the same. Everybody's um, built makeup of yeah. marriage does not look the same. Yeah. And you know what works for your house and what doesn't work for your house. And if your husband is happy and he loves it, I love it too. Absolutely. But listen, there's one thing that I've learned. Even in love, oftentimes, don't ever stop striving to be better. Listen, we every year you have I put I give myself a goal of what I can do better this year that I didn't do next year. Mm -hmm. And it's necessary to keep your marriage alive, fresh, vibrant. You don't want to get bored with your husband, with your spouse. Yeah, it's important um, to make sure that we're growing our marriage because we're growing as individuals. Yes. We're not the same people that we were when we got married mm -hmm. at 25. Mm -hmm. I'm not the same woman that I was at 35. Absolutely. So now at 45, it's definitely important to make sure that the relationship is evolving because we both are as individuals. You're and newlyweds all over again. We are. Yes. We are. <laughs> And she's, I'm not going to share her story, but we'll talk about it over the next couple of weeks. But she's actually renewing her vow soon. We are in less than 30 days. Yes. So we will be newlyweds again. I know. I'm excited about yeah. it. So, Mika, come on. We've sent out in our social media audience, we shared some questions that we thought that were extremely good. And we wanted to hear from our viewers to see how they, um, how they responded. So, Mika, share with us a question that you asked your audience. Um, well, I asked quite a few yes. and got some interesting answers, um, but we also put it out there for some of our viewers to send questions to us that mm -hmm. they wanted to get feedback from. Mm -hmm. And the hot topic was, um, if you think it's disrespectful to not wear your wedding ring. Oh, well, this is, that's hilarious. Um, and, and it depends, again, on your relationship for I me. I think so. My husband and I just had this conversation because he was going to run out to the store. And I don't remember what it was. And his wedding ring was over there on the kitchen counter. He was like, all right, babe, I'll be right back. I was like, oh, you about to leave? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, babe, I'll be right back. I was like, oh, you about to leave at the house right now? And he was like, yeah, I'm about to go. I was like, oh, you, you got everything that you need? He was like, yeah. And then it dawned on him he didn't have his ring on. And for me, the wearing of the ring is very important mm -hmm. to me because it means that I am in love with my wife. I am a man that is happily married. And this is my outward um, example of mm. the person that I've given my life to. Yeah. I think um, how you started off with your reply, that it just depends on the relationship mm -hmm. and um, the situation. When I waited to see what everyone else had to say before I gave my opinion, because I don't want what I feel or what I think to sway the way that anyone else thinks. Um, I do have my ring on today, but oftentimes I don't. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times my husband doesn't wear his. And I don't know if it's just after 20 years, it's like, I know I'm very comfortable in my relationship. So I know, and everybody knows that mm -hmm. we're married. So it's, not that my ring is a second thought, but I don't um, look at it the way that I did in the beginning where it's like everywhere I go, mm -hmm. I have to wear it. Even if I don't wear the engagement ring, I'm wearing the band mm -hmm. so that people know that, you know, I'm a proud wife. And I think that um, 
as we grew in our marriage and our businesses, added kids, we're juggling friendships and relationships, um, that it became more important for me to make sure that um, myself, my behavior represented him. Mm -hmm. That when people saw me, that they knew that I am Mrs. Woods. Mm -hmm. um, and for him, he doesn't wear his ring because of the type of work that he does. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, that was very important to me, and it bothered me. Um, and here we are 20 years down the road, and I'm just now going, you know what, I'm going to get you a silicone ring. It feels like absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. He tried it on. He's like, this is perfect. Why didn't we think of this, you know, 10, 15 years ago mm -hmm. um, when I was on his back? about where's your ring? Uh-uh, where you going? Mm -hmm. Oh, when you go out, those girls need to know. And he's like, everybody knows <laughs> that I'm married, who I'm married to. Um, you know, but I think that as the relationship grows, mm -hmm. um, you start moving around the pieces like a chessboard. Yes. And this was very important to me when we were fresh. Mm -hmm. And now this is very important to me that uh, because you work so much, that you're available on Sundays, don't answer the work phone. Don't do anything that's family day. So that's what, you know, takes precedence for me now. Um, and it's very important that you realize in your marriage, it is you create what works for you. Yeah. What works for me may not work for you. And you cannot um, frame your life based off of what somebody else is doing. You have to have constant communication of what you and your husband are comfortable with. That's one of the key things in relationships. In any marriage, um, communication is key. Oftentimes, I find myself over-communicating oh, just too. to make sure <laughs> that the communication stays alive and it stays fresh. Now, for me, my husband is a pastor, and he's extremely long-winded. So I don't think communication is ever going to be a problem in our marriage. <laughs> but for those of you who are married, make sure that your girlfriends or your family members don't know more about your life than your husband does. Mm -hmm. Always make sure that you keep him first on the communication chain. And listen, this is what creates longevity to unions. I think so. Um, communication is huge. Um, my husband is not a big communicator. Mm -hmm. but, but he communicates over his own way, but right? He speaks to me. I understand his language. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. it's one of those things when we're out, I have to make sure that I'm not stepping on his toes and speaking for him. Mm -hmm. But it's just that I know what he's saying, mm -hmm. even when he's not saying it. Mm -hmm. um, but he does speak to me, but he's not a big communicator. But I also think that um, communication, and as long as you're operating with integrity. Absolutely. Um, integrity and staying true to what your core values are in mm -hmm. your marriage. Mm -hmm. um, operating with integrity is very big for me. Absolutely. In the relationship, in the workplace, in friendships, um, I hold that very high. Um, but the communication piece is major. That, yeah, that's my jam. Yes. <laughs> One of the other hot topics that we had was how do you resolve conflict? Um, that question, that question has caused many couples to lead to divorce because mm -hmm. oftentimes you don't have um, the tools and the essentials that you need to resolve conflict. One thing that I learned from um, being sitting in marriage counseling sessions as my husband is ministering to the couples, oftentimes you've learned that in conflict, people don't listen. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they are quiet while the other person is talking. And then when the other person stops talking, then they begin to talk. So one thing that you have to do in conflict is to make sure that you are listening to the heart of the person that you're in conflict mm -hmm. with. Oftentimes we're so busy trying to prove our point that we don't hear what another heart is saying to us. So for me, one thing that is extremely vital is the listening portion of conflicts and if you are a type of person where when you get upset, you are a screamer, mm -hmm. nothing can ever get resolved in elevated tones. So if you are a screamer, I would say calm down first. Don't ever have a, a conversation trying to resolve conflict at the height of your emotion because your emotion will take priority over the situation and there won't be any resolve. So again, if you are uh, in conflict, I would the advice that I would offer is to become a better listener. Mm -hmm. Be sure that you listen to the heart of the person that is speaking. You may not always agree with them, 
but try to make a point to understand what it is that they're saying. It's okay to agree to disagree, but listening is key. And also, for those who are screamers and yellers, at the height of the emotion, don't have the conversation because yellers aren't really looking for resolve. They're looking to be heard. Yeah, we are. <laughs> You're yelling. Make I used to be. That I'm voice. Grown. What does that voice sound like when you are yelling? <laughs> we are, but I'm just being transparent. And I lo- that's what says authenticity. Yeah, says. That, I'm just being transparent. I do yell because, as I mentioned, um, my husband isn't combative. Mm-hmm. So if I am uptight or aggravated about something and I voice my opinion or I share what I'm feeling, he's just like, he's very chill and laid back. Mm-hmm. So that takes me up another notch. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, maybe he didn't hear me. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> you know? And what I've learned is the message gets lost in the mess. Yes. So he's now good. like, you know what? Come back when you bring that down mm-hmm. because I'm not checking for you right now and what you're saying. And so I have grown to the point where I don't do that because I've kind of learned to read him. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, before, I, I right, listen I'm off the hook. I used to be a yeller too. And my husband is the complete opposite. So he, will, mine, yeah. he will not argue. Like we have been together. We'll be celebrating six years in September. And I can count on. <laughs> yes. And I can count on one hand how many arguments we've He's actually elevated. had. Yeah. If my husband elevates his voice, I know at that moment that he lost something in his heart that he'll never get back. Because for men that are calm, to take them to the level that they raise their voice, uh-oh. Yeah. Something really My husband happened. one time in 20 years, and I can tell you without a doubt that one time, I know it was me. <laughs> like it was me I was pushing all the buttons like unzip the jacket the buttons under the buttons like I know that it was me mm-hmm. um you know but I guess that's where it comes into play for us that have that type of personality mm-hmm. to recognize where we're weak yeah. and work on that Absolutely. in order to make sure that we're strengthening the relationship not just the marriage but the friendship that we have because that's, that's more important, very important than the marriage. to me that he is my friend and that he respects me and that he looks at me and says I actually like the person that I chose mm-hmm. um, so that was important for me to get to understand myself mm-hmm. what my triggers are and how to deal with it because um, I was very defensive mm-hmm. um, not necessarily argumentative but defensive mm-hmm. um, so if he did speak up and say I'd like to work on this or I'd like to see you do this differently you know I'm like the neck rolling finger popping like what like I'm perfect (laughs) not that I think that I'm perfect but it's like you tell me that when we was all good I was perfect for you and now you want me to change um but it took a lot of self-examination absolutely to to realize that girl no and marriage requires growth and maturity yes you cannot keep them the same mindset and believe that your marriage is going to be happy that is one of the necessary components to produce Mm -hmm. happiness happiness is a choice growth is a choice peace is a choice chaos don't do it yeah nothing great can be birthed out of chaos um mika if you had advice for towards conflict resolutions that what would you give to our audience list, our listening audience? Um, I think that it's important for people to carefully think before you speak. Mm-hmm. So in doing that, what works for me is I'll take full advantage of the notes application on my phone mm-hmm. and type out everything I want to say. And I <laughs> yes, let it, Mika. And I let it sit there. And I then I'll go that. back a few hours, right, after I've done something else and kind of cool down and reread it. Mm-hmm. And then I'll say, all right, I need to take this out. I need to reword this. This needs to just go away altogether. I need to add this. And then I'll send it so that he can read it. And I'll say, we need to talk about that message that I sent you. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that's what works for us. Like you said, everyone's relationship is different. Yeah. For us, that works because I know me and my mouth. And people say, it's your tone. It's not what you're saying, it's your tone. So it's best for me to just send him this little message like, oh, we need to discuss X, Y, Z. And then when we come together, I've already gotten out the emotional stuff. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know, but I typed it to myself in my notes. 
And then I got away, you know, did away with that. And then I send him the message like, hey, we need to talk about X, Y, and Z. Um, so I think that it's just important for us not to shoot from the hip. Mm-hmm. Because when you do that, it's dangerous. Absolutely. And it's hurtful and you do damage um, that sometimes you're, you may not be able to heal from. Listen, so that's words why I think hurt that it's more than a fist. Yeah. So words. that's why I think that it's very important mm-hmm. to be careful um, what you say. And what I've learned about me is how not. You say it. Yes, how you say it. Mm-hmm. That's That was a very important lesson. Um that I'm, I needed to learn in life, but I'm glad that I learned it in my safe space with my husband, mm-hmm. as opposed to on my job. Yes, you know, or absolutely. It's in in another situation that the the result may not have been the same, but because he loves me enough to tell me the truth mm-hmm. about myself, um, I appreciate that. So, and again, one thing that I want to stress um, over and over again is nobody's marriage looks the same. Mm-hmm. You cannot look at my marriage or Mika's marriage or anybody's marriage and say, "Baby, this is what I want us to look like." Every us is extremely yes. unique to what you birth, and when you are getting married, you bring a one hundred percent of yourself to the union. And if you are you if you are at a Fifty percent capacity. You're not ready to get married. Marriage counseling is key to prepare you for success. I don't ever give advice to anybody that's getting married to leave out the counseling session of your union. It is necessary. It uncovers things that you may not see in the bliss of dating. Mm-hmm. So marriage mm-hmm. counseling is key and vital in the creating of the us. And it's also key a little ways down the road as well. When you're getting to re-know, re-know your partner again, that don't sound right, but it's going to work because every last one of y'all know exactly what I'm mm-hmm. saying. When you're getting to, when you're learning the newness of who your partner is becoming, oftentimes you may need assistance to, okay, he's grown or she's grown to this level, and I don't think that we grew together. I may, You may need a third party to come in to assist you in the growth. While you should not grow a part in growth if you are being very intentional in your love you should grow together the reality of it is life does happen do not feel like it is a bad thing to sit down with your partner your heart and say baby I think that we need somebody to help us navigate through this season of our lives that's what saves covenant I agree we had another hot question what's another question that you received me um oh Someone wanted to know, how do you balance your relationship as a priority and also making sure that you're engaging and spending quality time with your friends? Um, Someone shared that that was um, a bit of a challenge for them because absolutely their spouse and their kids are their first priority. That's Mm -hmm. their number one um, that they take care of but they felt as if their friends felt left out or slighted. And I think that maybe some newly married women or men face that that challenge because when you were the single person, you kind of could do whatever you want and come and go as you please. And then when you uh, attach yourself to a man or a woman and now you're married and you've started a family, your priorities change, they shift. Mm -hmm. And so for some people it's hard. So that was another question um, that they asked of us. How do you create that balance? Oh, well, I, they probably should not have asked me because my question is, my answer is probably be a little bit more blunt than <laughs> most people's would be. But my my response to that would be, grow up. You see that I am living a life that I prayed for. You see that I am happy with my husband and that my kids bring me peace and my kids give me joy. Find it within your heart Mm -hmm. to unselfish yourself and appreciate the newness of my life. And don't feel like you're being left out. Find a way to navigate space to be like, okay, maybe once a month we can do something together. And you appreciate that time Mm -hmm. that you're able to spend with your friend. But maturity would say that when you see somebody that you love living the life that they created, a life that they prayed for, I don't think that you should be the selfish friend to say, oh, you don't have time for me now. No, it's not that I don't have time for you now. It's now that I'm living out my 
my life is manifest in the prayers and the time that I put into it. I don't mm -hmm. need for you to come against my happiness. I need you to a find your own happiness and b appreciate the time that we spend together. Yeah, I think it's um, important to make sure that <clears throat> you have people in your circle that clap when you win. Yes. So for me, unfortunately, I don't have um, an answer for that because I've never experienced that. Because mm -hmm. I've always been like terry says she's been in love since she was in fourth grade yes, i've been so very protective of my energy since i was in fourth grade because i had some trauma with some friends in elementary school and ever since then i'm like i make sure that i surround myself with people that understand the way that i love yes. and love me the that's way important. that i need mm -hmm. so that's important um so what i did do and it wasn't that anyone you know voice their opinion about oh we miss you or we don't see you anymore it, it just kind of organically happened mm -hmm. when i got married my girlfriends we meet once a month mm -hmm. for dinner we go to dinner at the same place mm -hmm. we get the same meals <laughs> it's like <laughs> groundhog day but it's our therapy it's what works it's our therapy and it works for us mm -hmm. and then every person's birthday in our circle we make sure that we all get together and celebrate that person because they deserve that. Okay. Um, and then outside of that, if we do see each other twice a month, that's okay. That's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. But you kind of got to get in where you fit in because life moves fast. Life moves fast. Life moves fast. And so if someone gets a promotion, we celebrate that. If someone is getting married or having a baby, we all celebrate that mm -hmm. because we are all equally satisfied with the lives that we created because That's we key. cheer each other on mm -hmm. on that journey. Mm -hmm. And I always say, I tease all of my girlfriends, and I'll tell them, everybody has a turn up. And everybody has a turn down. Mm -hmm. So there's things that have happened to them, things that have happened to me. And I'll say, I'm just in a mood because I'm in my down space right now. And so they'll say, well, what can I do? What can I do? Mm -hmm. And that's how you know that you have the right people. Mm -hmm. Because what you can do is just come over my house and sit on the couch and watch Law and Order. <laughs> yeah. I don't really need anything. I just need to be around energy that mm -hmm. kind of fills me up right now mm -hmm. and so my husband gets home from work yes. so you know that's balance for yes. me it's yeah. key to always the questions that we received and the questions that we asked are just keys to what creates a successful union mm -hmm. and and again everybody's union is extremely unique and you may not face the same things Mika and I have faced or those who sent in their questions and their responses but you create your own questions within your own union and it is my heart's desire that you would find a safe place to ask those questions and get those questions answered as you know I am the first lady of a church and for me my safe place is to go to God to ask the hard questions. And in the peace of our time together, I get answers that no other voice could have given me. Um, mm -hmm. So I would, I, I strongly suggest in prayer that in, in marriages that prayer is key. It is what builds. It is what keeps. It is what sustains marriages. So that is definitely a necessary component. And one of the things that I mentioned before is what is your game plan for marriage? Mm -hmm. um, the, the, I chose the we chose the questions that we talked about tonight because those are some things that lead to some, they are the highest statistics of divorce. The questions that we received mm -hmm. and most times divorce can be avoided if the proper tools Absolutely. are given to avoid it so make sure that you have a game plan what is your union supposed to birth what is it that you and your husband are to do together at the five-year mark at the 10-year mark at the seven-year mark what is it that you are supposed to do together? And if you don't know how to begin to ask the question of how do you begin the game plan, simply ask yourself, what can this union birth together? What can my husband, the skill set that my husband and I possess, what is it that we can do to make the world a better place? That's what starts an excellent game plan because every covenant has an assignment attached to it. And Mika, as we are getting closer to the, the our wrap-up hour, time goes so it's fast. It's so fast. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> One of the things that I believe is very, very key in marriages and one of the most difficult things to do is to forgive. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's important. Um, very briefly, what advice would you give to the heart of a wife or a husband? Well, we can only speak to wives. What what um, words of wisdom can you give to a wife that's struggling with forgiveness? I think oftentimes um, forgiveness comes from a place of disappointment where we have expectations mm -hmm. of a person and you feel as if they've let you down, disappointed you, betrayed you. Um, so first I always say, if you're gonna put expectations on someone, you need to put expectations on yourself. Absolutely. What is your responsibility in the relationship? Mm -hmm. um, secondly, if they do um, create an offense and it's important for you to hold on to the good times, yes. the good memories, who they are inside. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we look at a person when they offend us and they become that offense. That's good. When you need to remember that there's still a human being inside of under all of that trauma, under all of that hurt or whatever it is, that mask that they're wearing, there's a person in there that you love because you yes. picked them. Yes. So unmask that mm -hmm. and look at the person, talk to the person. And the more that you do that, you'll start to grow and you'll see those layers kind of peel off like an onion, I feel. Yes, that is so, so good. You have to remember, uh, Mika gave some great advice. Um, forgiveness is a choice. Mm -hmm. And you can choose to live in the offense or you can choose to move on. And life happens. And I choose to move on because I am with my life partner. Yeah. Oftentimes people say, oh, I'm with my soulmate. No, I'm with my life partner. Mm -hmm. To me, that has more value. That has more weight. It puts a demand on your will to make choices that will make us be together forever. I agree. Uh, so mm -hmm. marriage is one of the greatest things that could ever, I believe, one of the most powerful relationships on the earth. I believe that marriage births, is intended to birth something. Make sure that in your loving, you find out what it is that your marriage is created to birth mm -hmm. and do everything in your power, your capacity, and your will to bring that birth into fruition. It's been a great moment. It has. It, I'm it so, so excited. Fast. It's so fast. <laughs> Life flies by. I think our Marriage Matters segment is one of my um, favorite segments because of how I view marriage. I'm so passionate about it. I'm, and I'm very passionate, as you know. Mm -hmm. And I find that what we're doing here, so many people are messaging us going, it wasn't enough. I know. Or you guys should talk about this. This is what you <laughs> Do you want to come on the show? Yes. <laughs> this is what y'all need to discuss. So I think that it definitely means something, mm -hmm. not just to the two of us, yeah. but to, to other folks, because I like the fact that we are offering two different perspectives. Absolutely. Like we're on the same page and mm -hmm. have the same value and the same mission. Yes. But we walk two different paths mm -hmm. and then they join. Yeah. And I think that's what the people love because it's relatable. It is. And, and it's genuine. And it listen, the only the only story I have to tell is my own. Yeah. And I can't sugarcoat the truth because sugarcoating truth does not save. I believe that authenticity saves mm -hmm. and truth is what gives answers and if you always present a perfect life then many people will fail yeah well I say um, my testimony could be someone else's greatest teacher absolutely so yeah that's why I share mm -hmm. I share I don't share everything no but I Everybody do can't feel handle that all your truth it, it's important um, to be very transparent and speak with integrity when someone asks me something mm -hmm. because if they're courageous enough to ask you the hard question, that means that they're really seeking the answers. Yes. So, and yeah. I, I'll just say this as we're closing out. Thank you so very much for joining um, mm -hmm. myself, Lady Nakia Wright, and Mika Woods on our Marriage Matters segment. It means so very much mm -hmm. that you've joined us on the journey. You look forward to sharing with us. If you have um, a heart for marriage, um, and you would like to be entered into the possibility of joining us on the panel, please inbox both Mika and I. We're looking for those. If you're an author, if you have a book, if you have something coming up and you want to share um, your thoughts on marriage, I'm not saying that everyone will be welcome on the platform, but we would like to review your information and give you a platform if it fits. Um, so please share with us we would love to hear from you um one thing that i would like to say when it comes to marriage is that marriage covers 
never expose your spouse. Always cover the one that you love. Mm -hmm. Always make sure that um, in the world that, that they present one a more excellent life um, to the world and, and be what you needed in your time of, of, of trouble. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you, um, I'm, I forgot to do the drawing. This is what live TV is. We're about to do the drawing. Did we already draw, Sean? This is the name that we draw. And the winner of um, the Love Chanel Inspired Buttons is Karna Gibson. So Karna, we, you don't have to respond. The buttons are yours. <laughs> if you were, remember, thank you so very much. This is live TV, y'all. This is right, live. Uh, this is what happens when you're live. Um, every week we do a drawing, and Lovery is um, sponsoring our gift this week. Lovery Incorporated. She's Marcy Diane is the owner. She's one of a Woman's Voice Matters Dream Team members, and she's come out with a Chanel inspired love buttons, and that was our giveaway this week. So, Karna Gibson, you are our winner of this week's giveaway. Yes. And without further ado, thank you for joining us this week. It's been extremely wonderful. I believe vital information was given out, and I pray that we, something was said here that makes your life better. Thank you so very much, and we look forward to seeing you next Thursday at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Yes. <laughs> thank you, guys.